In the last program, Tune Crack, I introduced the absolute pitch point. This is the point in time where you still can accurately discern two different pitches if they are a quarter tone apart. That is, after absolute pitch point seconds, you are still capable of distinguishing if the second note played is lower, higher, or the same as the first note played before absolute pitch point seconds. You must recall the first pitch, otherwise, you cannot make a decision that is based on substantiality. That point in time, where you can still detect deviations of 50 cents, is your personal absolute pitch point. Determining the absolute pitch point requires only your listening skills. You don't have to produce a sound. In the Tune Crack program I encourage you to sing or hum the pitch. Since I think that the act of taking over of the pitch, with your voice, by singing or humming, is the best method for remembering it. In spite of this, the program Tune Crack does not oblige you to use your voice. In this video I'm going to introduce the perfect pitch point. And Felix's pitch point. If you followed my videos, you will have noted that I differentiate between the use of absolute and perfect pitch. I use the term absolute pitch to mean pitch frequencies defined by the equal tempered system, where A4 swings with 440 Hz. Whereas I use the term perfect for matching a pitch perfectly. So, for example, if you match the pitch in a church with an old organ that has the note A4 tuned to 432 Hz instead of 440 Hz, then you are in perfect harmony with that organ, only if your humming of A4 is also tuned to 432 Hz. So, I use the term perfect when you produce a sound that matches another sound perfectly, independent of the equal tempered frequencies. If the sound you have to match falls in the equal tempered system, then perfect pitch is of course the same as absolute pitch. To measure listening skills I introduced the absolute pitch point with the program, Tune Crack. To measure your perfect pitch matching ability after a time period I will use the term perfect pitch point. For example, your personal perfect pitch point is at 90 seconds. The term perfect pitch is associated with several attributes. For an example, look up Wikipedia. Thus, although a well-established term, no universally accepted technical definition of perfect pitch exists. So as not to dilute the term further. I introduce the term Felix's pitch point, a point I can freely define. We can compare the term perfect pitch with, say, the term super runner. Technically super runners run 100 meters in less than 10 seconds. For the majority of humans the speed is beyond reach. Just taking the time to work on our ability, on the other hand, is easy and says a lot more than, you are not a super runner. Unlike perfect pitch with its broad description, Felix's pitch point is technically measurable. So, let me define Felix's pitch point. Like absolute pitch, that is a question of either you can fulfill the criteria or not. Felix's pitch point defines a particular point that you can reach, or not. Felix's pitch point differs in two ways from the absolute pitch point. First, it involves more than simply listening. You must sing or hum pitches, and try to match a given pitch as perfectly as possible. Second, Felix's pitch point is not a variable point in time, it is a particular point. To express your ability below and above this point, I use the previously introduced term personal perfect pitch point. Here is the definition of Felix's pitch point. Select four notes that you can sing comfortably. The program will sound the first note. You get two seconds to take over the pitch with your voice. Thus, you should immediately sing or hum the note back. During training, the program gives you feedback on the pitch precision for about two seconds. Then, after a delay of four minutes, you must sing the note again from recall. And you must hit the note with the precision of 50 cents. If you fulfill this criteria, for all of your four selected notes, then you have reached Felix's pitch point. Sounds fairly simple? Don't be fooled by this simple description. In most cases you will have difficulty hitting the pitch after the four minute delay if your ear is not well trained. 
because most people can easily reach a precision of 25 cents if the delay between the reference sound and the performance is only a few seconds. We measure your absolute pitch ability as the delay interval in which you can still match the pitch within the above criteria as your personal perfect pitch point. Similar to the high jump in sports, you might best begin by singing for a short interval, a pitch you can fairly easily execute. If you hit that mark, then you raise the bar to the next level. Your absolute pitch ability is the highest time delay you reach. I call it your personal perfect pitch point. Next, let's look at our training program. The training overview looks different from the previous explanations of Felix's pitch point. But Felix's pitch point remains the same. You must hit four notes with the precision of 50 cents after a four minute pause. In a first step, you select eight notes that you can sing or hum well. Each note you select in the program. You must confirm by singing it back. Otherwise, the program won't accept the note for the tests. After the selection, the absolute pitch training exercises begin. All you have to do in the exercises is to sing your selected notes back. The first exercise comprises all eight notes and has a delay period of only 1.5 seconds. The maximum mean deviation allowed for this exercise is 50 cents, and the maximum variation allowed is 75 cents. From exercise to exercise, either the required precision increases. From 50 cents to only 33 cents deviation for the allowed mean deviation, to only 25 cents deviation, or the delay increases between when the program sounds the pitch and when you must sing the note back. The delay increment is only 1.5 seconds, up from 1.5 to 3.0. The idea is that you learn to retain the memory of the note, or better, that you mentally retain the accurate muscle positions that produce the note correctly, little by little, and for longer and longer. Here's an example exercise. And here the exercise would repeat with the next selected note. But let's walk through the exercise with some commentary. When the exercise begins, you see the progression of the time along this line. The exercise begins with a very small pause, so you can focus your mind on the exercise. Next, the note you must afterward match singing is played. Listen carefully and prepare to take over the pitch with your voice. After the note has finished playing the training phase starts. To test if your muscle positions are correct, you should sing the note immediately after it has sounded. To accomplish this in addition to the timeline progress, a new horizontal bar, labeled training, appears. At the same time a vertical bar starts moving, and the pitch you are singing or humming gets recorded and displayed. Especially when the delay is large, you will notice that this vertical bar moves faster than the timeline marker. Above the training bar a magnified view shows the actual pitch deviation to the note. The visual feedback helps you to position your muscles so that you are on target. Depending on the exercise level, a longer pause follows. If the delay between the notes is more than a minute, your mind might stray from the exercise. That is okay. But do so actively. Don't try to beat the program by singing the note during the duration of the pause. Try to store your vocal cord muscle positions in your mind. The goal is to learn to remember these muscle positions so that you can recall them later on a different day. Five seconds before the test, a white noise is sounded and a horizontal bar labeled prepare appears. The vertical countdown bar shows you the remaining time until the test begins. Begin singing before the actual test time starts. In this way, you have time to position your vocal cord muscles correctly for the test. No visual feedback is given during this preparation phase. As soon as the test begins a new bar labeled test appears. 
and the pitch is shown visually again. Because only one second of the pitch will be evaluated, after a second lapses, a red bar appears. With the pitch feedback you can see how well you remembered the pitch. In the beginning you will use this feedback to get to smaller deviations, by which fashion you may push your mean to the required precision. However, in the following exercises, a deviation of more than 50 cents will no longer be accepted. The test ends after 2 seconds. The feedback cycle for this exercise starts. The evaluation is based on two parameters. Your accuracy in natural vibrato, a slight variation in pitch around the pitch center. In the sample exercise the effect of the vibrato is not allowed to push the pitch beyond 75 cents from the target pitch. The accuracy is set to 50 cents, so the mean deviation must not move more than 50 cents from the target. In this sample the mean was 44 cents off, and the effect of the vibrato during the test period was always less than 75 cents above the required mean. If the mean or the effect of the vibrato exceeds the given parameter values, then the performance would not pass. Since the 75 cents limit appears right from the beginning, you should start singing before the note is due. So you develop your sound to hit the target for when it gets evaluated. Since all pitch samples evaluated must be within 75 cents you must remember the muscle positions accurately enough to pass that level, taking account for your natural vibrato. At first this may seem an easy task. However, you will soon discover that you actively have to concentrate on keeping the muscle positions in your mind. This is also known as muscle memory. When all notes in an exercise have been tested, an overview of your performance is displayed. For each note the deviation and variance is shown. So how do we train muscle memory? First, a method of measuring muscle memory retention is needed. Second, feedback for your exercise progress is important for your motivation. With these two points in mind, I have developed the absolute pitch ability method. The handle for measuring the absolute pitch ability is the delay time as described before. To keep you motivated, we begin by small increments, and leave some room for developing precision. As in sports, it is very likely that your path not only ascends one day, but you very well might fall behind your best achievements the next. As soon as you recognize a decrease in your precision, repeat the previous exercise. This ensures that you stay on track, and that you better grasp the fine movements of your vocal cords. Yes. After a certain point it does get harder to make progress. But, reaching Felix's pitch point is not unrealistic, since it is a mental activity. If you pass lesson 4, then you can improve your pitch ability score simply by continuing the training because, by passing lesson 4, you have proved that you can produce pitches to a precision of 25 cents. The following exercises of the absolute pitch ability method help you to prolong the duration you can retain a pitch, or improve the accuracy of vocal muscle positions, in your memory. The brain will find a way to store, and later recall, the muscle positions with enough precision. However, even when it clicked in your mind and you think you got it now, you are not finished. You will still see setbacks. However, if you continue the training, the setbacks will become fewer and fewer. You will also improve and get better and faster at recognizing pitch deviations. It is like learning a foreign language, progress takes time and repetition. But, to reach Felix's pitch point doesn't take as long as learning a foreign language. To be able to produce four sounds with a 50 cent accuracy is less complex than learning the grammar rules of a language. It is comparable to learning the correct pronunciation of complicated words. Even so, reaching Felix's pitch point seems easier than it is. You must be willing to do 20 minutes of singing and recall training each day. Sometimes, 20 minutes may seem like an eternity. Especially, if 4 minutes must elapse before you can actively sing the note back again. However, stick to the rule and don't try to beat the method. Concentrate on keeping the muscle positions to reproduce the sound in your mind immediately after the reference tone was played. Don't prolong the singing, or listen to another sound that you could use as a reference. Some remarks about the absolute pitch ability method. 
Why does Felix's pitch point encompass only four notes? Because four times four minutes is less than 20 minutes, the recommended daily training time. Why does the first exercise start with eight notes? Because it isn't easy to know which notes you can remember and reproduce best. Therefore, the pitch ability method uses an exclusion technique to find out your best notes. That is, after increasing the delay to 16.5 seconds for singing back the note, we reduce the number of notes to 7 for the next exercise. The program will abandon the note you sang off key the most. By reaching lesson 62, the delay time has grown to 31.5 seconds, and the program reduces the number of notes to 6. And so on. When an elapsed time of 2 minutes is reached, only one note is left to sing. You should feel pretty comfortable singing that note. With this single note the elapsed time increases to up to 4 minutes. After that the program adds back your second best note. And so on, until all 8 notes you selected in the beginning return. When the initial notes are added back the elapsed time stays at 4 minutes. Note that after adding back the 5th note, the time allotted for the exercise goes over the 20 minute limit. Thus, I have defined Felix's pitch point by the combination of the 4 minute recall and testing only 4 notes. After all notes have been added back, the exercises continue in minute increments. From 4 minute to 5 minute elapsed time. Up to 20 minute elapsed time. To finish the lesson using 8 notes would take more than 2 hours and 40 minutes. The exercises after Felix's pitch point are only here, if you really want to check that you can rely on your muscle memory. But usually, if you can recall the muscle positions after 4 minutes, then you can also recall the muscle positions after an hour. There are a total of 555 exercises. Which means that in the beginning you should do 3 to 5 exercises per day within your 20 minute time frame. If you stumble, this could mean that you repeat the same exercise 5 times a day, maybe even the next day. Try not to give up too quickly. Stick it out to the end of the proposed 100 day period. And if you don't reach Felix's pitch point within 100 days, you will have at least found your personal perfect pitch point. Or better, you have a scientific hint of your absolute pitch ability. You will also learn that you can, if you spend the time, always improve. Remember, as with learning a foreign language, you can always increase your vocabulary, learn idioms, and so forth. With the fetchability method you decide how perfect you want to be in the language of the musical year and how much effort you are willing to invest. So now, the stage is set for you. Let's see if you can reach Felix's pitch point.